with the these are category right in here. Go for uh, I just take that out. Three choices there. Three choices there. The this piece here at four inches. is packed up. And I wanted to show you guys how you can convert a Category 2 implement. This is a 7 foot, so it's 7 feet from there to there. A 7 foot Category 2 these are category two pins and width. But I what I want to do is I want to convert this rear blade to work on the 8N over there. And the reason we want to do that, the three point on the Alice, the Alice is better suited for mowing than it is for rear blade work like this where it's up and down and up and down and up and down. I don't know, there's something wrong with the three-point on the Alice. It does raise and lower, but it's pretty slow. And there's no leak down really whatsoever in it, so I can't figure it out why it is like that. However, I want to turn this blade into a Category 1. So these are probably inch-wide, inch-thick pins here. And... We have a pin in there that'll fit the Category 1 top link. And I went to Tractor Supply, and I think what we're going to do is we're going to put the... These are Category 1, see, Cat 1. These are Category 1 pins, and I want to put this pin here, and another one right about there. And it just so happens we have this... This is a piece of channel iron, I guess. C-channel. And I think what I'm going to do is this is going to get cut here. I'm going to cut these off, and then I'm going to make another cut here. So we'll have two four-inch pieces, and then I will drill a hole in the right in here somewhere. And then these pieces will get welded on right about there. And fortunately, this is pretty thick stuff. Uh, Probably three sixteenths. That's probably this is probably over a quarter inch, maybe three eighths. So I'll have plenty to weld to there. But we got this blade for free. It did not cost us anything. All we had to do was go pick it up. So I mean, these blades sell for I don't know two and three hundred dollars used, and a new one. Maybe five and six hundred. I'm not really sure. Don't don't quote me on the prices and stuff. But we got this this one for free, so I figured, you know, why don't we why don't we use it? There's also some. I have to do some welding on the cutting edge here that has split. So I will uh, probably cut some of that out, squeeze it flat, and then weld it to the other piece. Weld these two pieces back together, and then there's also a crack there. There's a crack there, and there's also this crack on the main tube here, and I think I'll probably take the angle grinder and open that up, and then hopefully this thing will be a pretty good blade for us. We'll take the lifting, whatever that is, uh, clevis maybe, we'll take that out, and I also have, this is a piece of, this is a lawnmower axle. And it just so happens this fits right in here, pretty much perfect. So I think what I'll do is I will probably weld a, maybe weld a washer on here, and I'd like to put a handle on this thing for easy changes and whatnot. But this, 
blade is, I think it's still worth doing some of this work to it. It's a six way, so you have three choices there and three choices there, so you can push and pull, whatever the case may be. I also want to cap this end to keep water from going in there, and I'd also like to cap that down there, plus this side here, and the same thing over on the other one. So water and moisture and stuff doesn't get in there and rot things out and burst these. Now this is where the seam is, so I'll just take the angle grinder in there and open that up and then just weld it solid again. So I guess first things first, let's cut the this piece here at four inches. I've got to say it's really nice having a metal cutting band saw like this. It does not cut the straightest, but for our needs it does pretty good. Now if these two bars hadn't been welded to the top of this, uh, we uh, this thing would have cut it just fine. I eventually ended up just using my portable band saw to finish this cut. This one was just to try to get a straight cut started and then go from there. But for many many of the things that we do, having this bandsaw is a real big help. I would really like to get a f floor model drill press also in this building that would greatly improve uh, productivity and working in here. But that'll come later. Uh, those are pretty those are a little on the expensive side. I think we only paid 30 or 35 bucks for this thing. And here I finally go over to the workbench and get the portable band saw, the porta band. Uh, this is a Bauer from Harbor Freight, and I've actually had pretty good luck with it. I haven't have really had any problems. Uh, this is some pretty thick, heavy duty stuff to be cutting with this band saw, and it seems to be it seems to be cutting it fine so I think that bandsaw is 11 amps if I remember correctly it's a deep cut and you can do like four four and a half inches maybe even five inches wide and deep the steel is the C channel is actually this came off a it's a, it was a hydraulic tank for like one of those ladders that automatically extends. It has like a hydraulic pump or something on it. And that, that was all free. Uh, we had a neighbor just getting rid of it. He was going to scrap it. And I said, well, I'll take that. I don't know what I'll do with it, but I'll take it. So here I'm get, just marking everything, trying to get it where I want it. And... The category one width of the pins on the inside is 26 inches, and we are a little bit smaller than 26. We're like 24, so like an inch smaller on each side, which I don't think will be an issue. Here I'm using the drill press in the, another building to drill these holes. I had, uh, I needed to drill, what were they, 7 eighths? I think they were 7 eighths inch holes. And obviously you do that before you put them on because, you know, before you weld it on. Because then it's, you know, a lot more difficult to drill it. Anytime we're drilling through steel, I try to make, try to get into the habit of using a drill press for just about anything when it comes to drilling in steel. I think this is a one inch, no, this is a half inch bit, if I remember correctly. And I had to go get another bit. This is a silver and Deming 7 eighths bit. And the problem with these ones is they're, you can't really sharpen them real well. They're so big, they don't fit into the drill doctor that I have. And you have to figure out a way to sharpen them by hand on the bench grinder. 
but I'm not good at sharpening drill bits, so I decided to swap it out for, uh, my brother suggested a, this is like a pine tree bit, I don't know what, what else they're called, but they have all the different sizes and stuff on them, so you can, you know, drill whichever size you want and just go further down. They're meant for thinner steel when this is kind of thick, so it deburrs it also, but it works good. I really need to buy one of these pine tree drill bits. Uh, Harbor Freight sells them, I think, for like 15 bucks or something, 10, 15 bucks, somewhere around there. So now I'm getting the some safety gear on because I'm going to be doing some angle grinding. You can see there's a lot of rust on this thing. This blade had sat out probably the majority of its life and actually it's still sitting out as I'm doing this voiceover. Uh, we've been having a lot of rain here so I did just about all of this in uh, about a day and a half's worth of work. Maybe two, something like that. But I'm just cleaning the surfaces and I'm going to tack everything up. I'm also cleaning the pieces, trying to get them as clean as I can. Of course those were covered in paint and the blade was covered in rust so you know they probably would not have stuck well if I hadn't have cleaned them. I really need to buy some new clamps also. These clamps I'm using now I should just get rid of them. They don't hold whatsoever and actually my hand works better. But I'm using a square also trying to square these things up and I'm just trying to get them as close to perfect as I possibly can. I usually only put two good tacks on these things and once I get the other side tack then it can be moved around as need be you know twisted or bent or whatever the case may be but it seems to work good for me uh, doing it this way. Everything is tacked up and since I'm going to be welding and I'm in short sleeves I'm going to put on sunscreen. Uh, I've already put some on my arm here and all over my arm here. Pretty much these two spots just in here and in here are the only things that get burnt on me because the welding gloves come up to about here so we will weld these things solid now as far as I know I don't think there's anything else that I need to do those of you that have watched my previous welding videos know that I like to fully weld just about everything I don't believe in spot welding I don't believe in putting really heavy tacks on stuff. I'd just rather fully weld it and then I know it's never going to come off again. There are certain applications where stitch welding or heavy tack welding is necessary but not on an application like this. I want this thing to be absolutely as strong as humanly possible and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this as strong as I can so fully welding it that's the way that we can make this as strong as it can be. I plan on using this blade for a little bit of dirt work, probably pulling the edges of the driveway in and also using it to mainly plow snow with. That's mainly what I'm thinking what we would use this rear blade for. I'm hoping it's going to be strong enough for that. This uh, frame here that I'm welding on is certainly heavy enough. I just hope the blade is strong enough. I've never even used this thing, so I don't can't say that I really know how well this thing is going to work. But uh, it should work fine. And that brush there, I actually bought that at Dollar Tree for a, for a buck, and it works really good for taking slag and that dust that comes off from welding. Here's what the first pass looks like. I'm no, I am not a professional welder whatsoever. But with all of the other welding I've done with this welder, I know this welder pretty good. And 
these welds will hold. I'm, I'll probably do a second pass just because I can to make sure that everything is going to hold. Actually, uh, the second pass would really benefit on here on these two edges, not so much on this one. I had forgotten to weld around the corner. They say whenever you weld, you're supposed to weld around the corner of something because the corner is a stress point. And I didn't really do that on these. It's kind of tough welding around a corner, to be honest with you, and it's even more difficult welding a piece of pipe but again, I'm just trying to get everything as square as possible. I had tacked this one up crooked, so I re-tacked it on again and trying to get it as straight and square as possible. But I'll tell you what, I really like this little 90 amp welder from Harbor Freight. I really don't see any need to uh, get something different. This welder works good enough for my needs, so... I think that's pretty much all I have to say for this video, but there you go. That is how you convert a Category 2 implement into Category 1. Hope everyone enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more, and hopefully we will see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.